Okay, let's come back to something that, that Dr. Fish brought up. Uh, uh, when to come off therapy? Patients who are doing poorly boy. go into a boy, oh progressive boy. phase of disease. Boy, oh boy. This becomes a very, it was a very controversial question at the American Academy of Neurology. This is a, di I can tell you the scenario that, that, that comes up. I can tell you my individual approach. So you're supposed to continue therapy unless it's not working, intolerable side effect, or a better treatment becomes available. One of the huge gaps is that we don't have treatment for progressive MS. So the typical, really, patient that you're talking about is the patient that started out with relapsing disease, was on a treatment for relapsing disease, appropriately so, and now has clearly transitioned to secondary progressive disease and seems to be remote from the relapsing phase. Because keep in mind, the disease-modifying therapies are approved for relapsing forms of MS, including secondary progressive when there are superimposed relapses. Relapses, contrast enhancement, rapid worsening. But suppose you are far down the pike in progressive MS and they're gradually worsening and it's been years since they had a relapse. They have no enhancement. They're not gradually worsening. Do you continue them on their disease modifying therapy or, or not, okay? And quite frankly, if I were being honest scientifically, I would say you would take them off. But as a clinician with the patient in the room there with me discussing it, I say, mm -hmm. do you think you're getting a benefit? Because what we would expect if a drug worked is slowing progression, not stopping progression, that they would do worse off treatment than on treatment. And there are no proven therapies. Do you think you're getting a benefit? Would you like to come off the medication and we can see how you do? And I'll have some patients who tell me, yes, I would. I don't really feel it's doing anything. Let's come off it. You're obviously following a wellness program. We make sure you really keep up the snuff. But then I have other patients who say, oh, no, I don't want to come off. I really feel this medication is helping me. I really feel if I hadn't been on it and weren't on it, I'd be getting worse faster. And I keep them on it. Mm -hmm. And is that the right thing? Is that the wrong thing? Can I say unequivocally there's no way they're getting a benefit from it? I can't. So that's how I personally do it, and I think that's how many neurologists mm -hmm. do it. And we understand that. And again, it doesn't happen just in MS. Alzheimer's is another really good one that the patient's family comes in and says, it's not doing anything, you know, and, but would rather, you know, our father be on it. So we absolutely understand, yeah, that you know, that's a real hard yeah. one. Yeah, it's that's, a, that's commonplace, and we support that. Uh, uh, because we understand you can't make a, you know, you know, another good analogy besides Alzheimer's is third and fourth line therapies for malignant diseases mm -hmm. where the, you know, response rate admittedly is, you know, two or three percent. Uh, yet if both the patient and the doctor feel that that's appropriate, you, you wind up supporting it. On the other hand, there are then the families that actually understand it and will say, even the MS, and they'll come in and say, you know, we don't want to be injecting right. once a week, Absolutely. three times a week. We don't like this particular side effect, whatever it may be, or, you know, do we have to? And at that point, right. it's, it's fine. And I'm just going to comment on one other thing, only because um, I have the data in front of me. But we just talked about, um, you, you did mention price. Um, and um, right, price is too high for these Yeah, drugs. and it's, it's, crazy. it's interesting. It's crazy. I, I do have to bring this out. It is crazy, and this is what again we talk a lot about this um, because, and I have the data in front of me since 2010. I have actually five different um, medications, and they have gone up anywhere in price. Gone up 43.7 percent. 52.28 percent, all the way up to 53.8 percent. Three years. Three years. In fact, I'm just going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to bore everyone for a minute here, but. I wish that were my yep. investment portfolio. <laughs> um, <laughs> five months. This is one particular medication. This started in um, July of 2010. Five months later, it went up by 6%. Seven months after that, 6%. Three months after that, 6.5%. Three months after that, 8.5 percent. Five months after that, 5.8 percent. And then three months after that, 4.5 percent. And that last increase was actually November 30th of this past year. Um, and so we expect some more. But to go up by those amount, it makes just, no sense. It does make no sense. So, so two questions. One is, are those prices that are being paid? Yes, absolutely, positively. OK, so that's what yes. that's. Oh. What he's paying. Yes. That's what I'm paying. That's what Leslie's paying. That's what you're paying in your premiums. So, so the second <laughs> question pays. is, 